Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Welcome to freshly dot grounded. F dot G. F G. Welcome. Welk. I'm looking for a piece of paper that reminded me of what I had to mention in this intro, but I can't. It's all right. Let's just go off the top of our noggins. Um, welcome. This is episode 186 of Freshly Grounded uh, with uh, an amazing brother called Musab. So Musab was actually a person who was recommended by you guys. See, we listen to you guys. Got a lot of DMs um, saying, got to get Musab on Freshly Grounded. Um, and so we, we hit him up and we said, let's do an episode, man. People are after it. And Musa basically, his, uh, he goes into it a bit more, but his mission is basically to encourage Muslims to start businesses um, in order to realize that they can then practice their faith more easily and more by having more time, controlling their time and stuff like that. So it's quite a cool initiative and you're trying to raise, raise awareness to that. We, we speak about it more in depth in the episode. Um, also, uh, guys, we are still fundraising for Yemen to help with these emergency packs. We want to, as Freshly Grounded uh, and our audience, the tribe, to donate 100 emergency packs, which are £100 each. And um, what they do is they provide clean water, hygiene kits um, to help with... Uh, kind of the battle of the coronavirus, but also with cholera. Um, that's been a long-standing issue in Yemen. So please do donate to that by the link in the bio. Also, if you want a free audiobook or a free membership for a month to Audible so that you can benefit from audiobooks like I do, you can go to uh, you can go to the link in our bio. The link in our bio, which will get you either a free audiobook or a free one-month membership. You can choose. It's up to you. And Audible will give us a kickback of the money um, for that, basically. Even though it's free for you, but Freshly Grounded gets a bit of financial support, you know? So um, do check that out, guys. And uh, without any further ado, this is episode 186 of Freshly Grounded with Musab. Okay, or Abu Musa. Musab Abu Musa. All right, guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Well... Actually, we were just about to get into the episode, but still, salam alaikum. Okay, let's just get into it. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? By best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Right, we're on. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Musab. How are we doing? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Yeah. First time on Freshly Grounded, first time on podcast? Yeah, first time on Freshly Grounded and definitely first podcast as well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, bro, so I, um, I the, to, let's give context to the people watching. Mm -hmm. um, you and I have bumped into each other probably over the years, um, probably given each other salam, but not uh, really spoken. More than a salam, am I right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably, I would say that's about right. Yeah, and um, it, I mean, we we obviously met um, at Badr. Are you okay for me to say that? Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fine. And um, and Alhamdulillah, so this is the first time we get to we get to actually chop it up, and it's nice because um, as much as I really really enjoy the episodes where I'm just like with someone who I know really well and we can have a laugh. I equally enjoy kind of getting to know someone for the first time on a podcast, especially when kind of the viewers can get to know you with me. So sure. um it'll be it'll be fun in Charlotte and I think there's a lot to talk about. Um there's a lot of people DMing us saying like uh you need to get this brother on a podcast. Oh really? Yeah okay. there's a lot of people DMing us saying you need to get this on a podcast. Um, you know, and from what was told to me mm -hmm. so um we'll start with this from what was told to me it was that you've recently started a new mission mm -hmm. to inspire muslims to yep. start businesses yep. so that they can be in control of their time and therefore pray easily mm -hmm. um and serve the deen because they are working for themselves and so they have freedom of time and money is that correct yes i would say in a nutshell uh, having said that, I think it's I think it's important not only the business side, but to understand that sometimes normality is not the best way. 
So for example, like sometimes we're growing up and we get told, you know, this certain route will make you successful. But sometimes we don't really question it. Like, will this route make us successful? So that is more than anything that I speak about and speak about things that which people think normality will get you success. Sometimes that's not really the way. So that's kind of what I speak about more than anything. So yes, you're right. But uh, a little bit more to that as well. Fine. So you, you, you said, when did you start your YouTube channel? To be fair, I probably started getting content out about two months ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how's it going? Alhamdulillah, it's good. Yeah. Good. If we can make impact with one person, I think that's the that's the main thing. So, so yeah. it's not it's not a case of like you know, am I getting a mad you know crazy following or anything like that? But Alhamdulillah, it's good. I've had good feedback, and yeah, I think the the topics I think I talk about are massively needed because I don't believe there are many people speaking about these issues as such. So yeah, uh, I think that your personality is perfect for for YouTube, man, because mm. you have to. I think. The great thing about YouTube is that loads of people have loads of different personalities and they can all work they can all work for like for their audience, right? But there's no doubt that being someone who is talkative, confident, um, can present themselves well, um, inshallah can 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 definitely have some success. And I think that that's how you come across. You come across like you're very confident in your speech, you're very clear in your speech. Um, and you obviously have like a very, very clear and like needed message as well to go out. All right, and I, I appreciate that, I guess. And I think the main thing is really and truly if we can impact the youth and, and show the youth that really and truly there are alternatives, that's the main thing, right? So Alternatives to like studying and stuff or what? I don't necessarily say that studying is bad, of course. But what I'm saying by alternatives, that do the youth really have someone to look up to? And I'm not saying that I am that person that they need to look up to, but do the youth have anyone to look up to who they can say, wow, like, you know what? For example, he's a billionaire or he's a multi-millionaire, but he doesn't care about that and he just cares about the deen. He just cares about Islam. The salah is more important to him than the money. So growing up, I, I realized one issue. I don't mind me saying, but basically I remember when I was maybe in year nine and year 10. And you know, sometimes you, you have a conversation, it just sticks with you. And one of my friends actually said to me, he said, if you want to be rich, you cannot be a practicing Muslim. Of course, mm -hmm. we were miskeen, we were young, we didn't really know. My friend said this to me. And that kind of stuck with me. And I realized like as the time go, go went on, that there is an underlying issue that sometimes in our heads, at the back of it, we sometimes growing up think that the one who prays spends five, you know, five times in the salah, in, in the masajids, uh, he's, you know, Quran, everything basically. He's probably not making that much money, is he? So that's something that I really wanted to talk about uh, and really wanted to explain to the people, really and truly, we had Sahaba that were rich, basically. You know, and sometimes people don't even know about that. So gaining wealth isn't bad. Gaining wealth is good, but it's how you spend your wealth, which is key. Yeah, I think that I agree with you. There's this massive issue that for some reason... A lot of the Muslims, I don't, I don't say all, but a lot of the people who are Muslim, who are like very successful, like we're talking the billionaires, or like the obvious billionaires that we can think of. Um, like I think oftentimes when you think of like someone who's like extremely wealthy, um, that's, you know, come from the same place as us. A person that comes to my mind would be someone like um, uh, Shah Khan. Mm -hmm. He was going to buy the Wembley, he was going to buy Wembley Arena for 90 yep, million yep. or whatever. And he owns Fulham Football Club. Yes. And um, and sometimes you think to yourself, like, man, like, how amazing would it be if people in that level of wealth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. were to attribute everything yes. to Allah at 100%. all times? Like, 100%. because it, uh, essentially that is, is true. And you don't have to. Mm -hmm. No one says that you have to go out there and say, oh, but this is Allah, this is Allah. This is Allah. But you don't know what the people are up to privately. 100%. But I agree with you that we need it. We yeah. need someone who's a billionaire to go, this is worthless. Yeah. Like uh, I read today uh, what Steve Jobs um, wrote before he died, right? And he said that I've always in life been seen as a wealthy man, and that's all that my I'm attributed to. The only attribute that I have to myself is wealth. Mm -hmm. But as much as, but he he said in life I've realized that in life you can pay someone to manage your money, you can pay someone to um, start a business or do this, do that. But what you can't do is rent someone to carry a disease for you. Yeah. That's yeah. what he said before he died, bro. And that's Steve Jobs, bro. Like, how many of us deep. would love to have been in that position 100%. of wealth? 100%. And yet he's saying one thing you can't do is pay, pay, one thing you can't pay someone to do is carry a disease for you. And he had to carry that disease himself. And so that goes to show that we really, really, really 
really need someone I think who who just has that level of wealth, not because we just want to see someone who's just say, ha ha, look, you, you can yeah. do, it. but just to, to to have that level of wealth, and because because I'm because a lot of for a lot of us, wealth is what we deem as success. Yes. So for someone to get to that level, mm-hmm. I say well, it's only because of Allah. Yeah. It's only because and and they're in the they're in the masjid five times a day, bro. Okay. Fajr salah in the masjid. Okay. They wake up after Hajj. They, I think it's needed, man. I agree. And this is it's crazy that you mentioned this because if we really do, if we really reflect on this, right, when we think about the multi, multi millionaires, the multi billionaires, um, how amazing would it be to have a Muslim, okay? And of course, your outer appearance does not matter, but I'll paint a picture for you. How amazing would it be for an individual to be, for example, you know, he's got a long beard, he's got a thobe on, you know, you look at him and you think he's a Muslim, basically, right? How amazing would it be if that individual was in a situation where the world was looking at him like, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing this. Because you know what happened with that? It would happen in that situation. The youth would say, whoa, this guy, he's a role model to someone like us. The youth would say this. Because if someone is achieving wealth, is successful, etc., 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 and he's coming across like a Muslim, goes on live TV and then says, but the wealth doesn't mean anything because me and you are both going to die. Um, do, you know, do you know how powerful that is? Mm, mm. Like, I remember basically thinking this in my head, and sometimes I think I think uh, about the weirdest things, right? But Alan Sugar tweeted something, and it impacted the presidents, right, in America and stuff like that, right? And it got me thinking: Who is Alan Sugar? He's just a businessman. Mm. He's got wealth, but that's what but he's known for. One tweet, and it was like, "Oh, Alan Sugar said this. Alan Sugar said this." Point being is. You can really affect the world by just one tweet if you are known for something and wealth isn't bad. But imagine being a Muslim, how much you could impact the world as well by just one tweet. Does that make mm. sense? So that's that's kind of the vision that I have. And inshallah, may Allah make it easy. Look, I think the main goal is always to put salah, put your deen before anything. And I think sometimes it can be taken the wrong way, of course. That it's like, oh, everything's about money, everything's about wealth. Like this is not. This, I'm not saying this is the case, but to have it is not is not bad. But how you use it is the most important thing. Yeah, I think I, I think that another kind of way of putting it is that we were speaking on live stream yesterday and saying that um, obviously, as we know, as a Muslim, we should have balance between hope and fear, and life's about balance. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks about the middle path and being upon the middle path. And however, what we mentioned on the live stream is that when a teacher uh, knows you very well. Okay, so if you see a teacher give a lecture about hope and hope and fear, you nine times out of ten you see them talking about having a balance between hope and fear, right? Because they're giving a lesson and they don't know who's watching. Yeah. But when a teacher sat with you and you have like a murabi and they know your personality, they can say, Musab, you're a bit too much on the fear side, you need to have a bit of hope. Or you're a bit too much on the hope side, you need to have a bit of fear. Yes. And I think like that, we need to say that we need to have a balance in the sense that we have to understand that wealth is not everything, but it's okay to um want to achieve uh, a lot of wealth if you and 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 then and then and then do the right things with it right mm. and perhaps the problem right now is that as a society maybe as muslims we we see wealth sometimes as like why are you trying to chase it and maybe we need to go well it's okay to not chase it but it's okay to um want to be wealthy mm-hmm. because if the wealth is in your hands as a practicing muslim bro mm-hmm. then we know that a lot of your wealth is going to be distributed. Yes. Uh, we know that you're going to be generous. We know that because you're going to be following what the um, guy, what the what the advice that is given to us is. You're going to be wanting to get an ajr from your wealth. 100%. You're going to want to build masajid. You're going to want to help families who are suffering, Muslims exactly. who are suffering, and therefore that's a great person hmm. to have like wealth. If we're in a situation where right now we we don't have someone who can like control all of the wealth of the people, or whatever, it's best. It's good that we can have our own wealth and. Um, it be in it be in the hands of practicing people who can yes. do good things with it, right? One hundred percent. Try try just lean forward a bit. Uh, for is that right? Because I think what it is, no no I think what it is is that the camera that's on autofocus is focused on the mic and not on you. How's that? Try look at the camera for a second, and that's awkward. <laughs> do you know what? That's a really nice. <laughs> look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're in focus now. We good? Yeah, yeah, we're okay, good. Okay, so Sorry, bro. So yeah, no. I, look, I hundred percent agree, and this is the thing: if the Muslims have the money, right? Imagine someone who, for example, right, someone approaches you and says, you know, there's a sister, there's a brother, they're in dire need. They need 50,000 pounds for something, whatever it is. We don't know, okay? 
and they're truthful, whatever it is, you know, they're right and, you know, the, st the story adds up and everything's right. For us to pull out £50,000 as Muslims, we're very good with it, to be fair, in terms of generating charity and everything like that. But imagine having a contact and say, listen, I've got, I've got something for you. And the brother doesn't see it like it's, I'm giving £50,000. He's actually so happy that he's got an opportunity to give his money. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the way we should see it. And so imagine having a brother that has an opportunity to give you. And he says, listen, I got you. You want fifty? Here, have it. And so... That's something that I, I, I remember thinking back last year. So I set up my own recruitment company two years ago, but I remember thinking this last year and thinking, man, I need opportunities to get, and I'm, I'm not obviously saying it in a boastful way, but there was a point where I was actually like, I need to get rid of my money. I don't want this money, basically. I was scared, right? I was actually saying like, someone needs to come up to me and I need to like get rid of this because it was scary. And so that's what I'm saying, like, we can spend wealth in a very good way and it's just our mindset and how we deal with it. Yeah, I agree completely. What do you think about... I think that there's this, uh, there's a really beautiful trait that you see in Muslims, right? And it's that, like you just mentioned about giving away money. Um, I've, I've recently, I remember... Um, so I'm going to try and be vague with it, but there's a brother who I know and he was struggling right a bit with his wealth and um somebody asked him uh somebody wanted to 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 buy a product from him that he sells right that he's he's in business and this brother what he did is he gave a better product to the person than they had purchased right because the person could have purchased a higher one maybe they couldn't afford it or whatever mm -hmm. but he gave a, a a better product the point is is that and that was a that was a practicing brother. The point is that brother has every reason logically to just give the product that the person bought because he needs to be able to sell that other one because he, it will make him more money. But because he fears Allah and he loves Allah and he understands his relationship with Allah, he knows that the more generous he is, mm. the more he gives for Allah's sake, the more that he will he will essentially get. Yes. I thought that's so beautiful that a, a person who's struggling, when they're struggling, not only do they like ask for from Allah, but they give more yeah. because they know they need it. And for us, it doesn't sound logical to give when yeah. you are struggling. Yeah, yeah. But for a person who has that much yaqeen, yeah. who understands how, like, the relationship that they have with Allah, they give more when they, when they, even when they're struggling. It's amazing. 100%. And this question I actually came across and someone asked me this question and they said, why, someone actually asked me, why do you want to do what you want to do? As in, why do you want to change the mindset of, of Muslims and help them in certain ways? And what are you going to get, 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 get out of it in essence? My answer was that really and truly, if I help anyone, I don't want anything in return. Because see, if I help you, for example, right, what you can give me is limited, right? If I help you with something, what you can give back to me is limited. But if I give you something with a full yakin, I am doing it in terms of helping a brother, doing it for the sake of Islam, and that Allah has me, basically. What you can give me is limited, but what Allah gives me is not limited. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So imagine giving something or, or helping the brothers, helping the Muslims, and saying, I'm, 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 you know, Allah's got me, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got me. So that's, that's the mindset, and that's why mindset is so, so important. Because if we have that mindset, Muslims will become successful. So what other things do you think are important for the winning mindset? Um, I think it's important to have goals in your mind, and I think it's important to know why you want to do what you want to do. More importantly, I think it's important to know whatever it is you want to achieve. It's important to know that it's important to know what is exactly you're going to receive. For example, I, I, I'll, I'll put some content to that. So hmm. when we're growing up, uh, I actually made a video on this on my YouTube channel, but it was a hundred thousand pounds salary, right? When we're growing up, we get told it's the best amount. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm not I'm not putting this down, and I'm not saying someone on a hundred thousand pounds isn't on a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but have we? And I ask the question to most people: What is a hundred thousand pound take home in your pocket? If I was to ask you that question, what would you say? Yeah, do you know what? I actually remember doing this at university. At university, someone said to me like, "What's the dream salary?" Right, and I remember saying like, "Okay, if I could just think like, you know, um, my wildest dreams. What's like enough?" 
and um, not too much and, and all of this kind of stuff. I think we ended up breaking it down. And at that time, because that maybe inflation and stuff. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. At that time, it was something like in order to make 80,000 in a year, you'd have to make like 120 or 110. Yes. And we were breaking that we were breaking that down saying, because then with 80, I think, I, 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 again, I can't remember, but I think at that time, it was something along the lines of with 80, you'd end up taking home about 5K a month. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking about how with 5K, once you break that down, especially with like, as Muslims, most of us are probably going to be renting. Yep. And then that is like, uh, if you've got a family of three kids and a wife that's a three bedroom house you're paying 2k exactly. away two and a half exactly. k car all of a sudden 5k net is yeah. like just gone it's especially gone. living in London 100% yeah. 100% and this it, I, honestly not many people know about this mm. and genuinely thinking about this if we really if we really reflect on it when do people find out about taxes yeah when, they, when they're working for the first time when they're time. working so you go to school you go to college you go to university you leave you get a pay slip and you're like wait, what is this tax? And tax is something which you have to live with for the rest of your life, but you don't really get taught unless you're doing a business degree or accounting or something like that. You don't even get taught about tax, about employers' national insurance or employees' national insurance. You don't get taught these things. So where you're thinking £100,000 is a lot of money, my question is, have you done the maths and do you know how much it is a month? And have you done the, then done the maths? Because £100,000 might be a lot right now when you're single and you don't have children, you don't have a family. But like you just said, when you have kids, a wife, rent bills and as a man if we say for example we want to take care of everything five thousand pounds can go very quickly it's not the dream salary which you might think that it was does that make sense so these are the sort of things i like talking about because not many people do okay so so do you are you what's your recommendation in terms of building this wealth is it is it to start business start a business to get into business um i, w I would answer that in a in a different way fine I don't know anyone who is working a job who is financially free. And that's how I would answer that. Okay. But you obviously, but obviously we'd have... Obviously but that is we subjective. Need, yeah, and we obviously need people who are working yes. in a job for people to yes. have businesses as well. Yes. Um, so how do you get around that dilemma then? <laughs> I think the first thing is knowing there's a problem. Mm. So look, if I at 20 years old think £100,000 is the financial free amount, right? Then my life is based on a hundred thousand pound, right? So I'm not here saying now you shouldn't have a job. If that's what you do, then do that. But for the brothers and sisters that say, we want to be financially free, which there are many who say that we want to have, you know, this so we can do this, 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 whatever it is. Many times the number they come up with is six figures. Mm -hmm. You hear that a lot, mm -hmm. six figures, right? Then I say, you have to understand how much that is, how much you're going to take home, how much you're going to pay out, and the first thing is knowing there's a problem to then coming up with a solution. If you don't know there's a problem, how can you come up with a solution? Okay, and that's where I'll say, so, so first of all, I agree with you. Yes. With that being said, um, I think that for, for, for someone like you, mm -hmm. that is a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Or me or, or other brothers and sisters, yep. right? But, for, but I think that is so it's subjective, and like you agreed, it's subjective to a person's personality type. Yes. And so that's why I think that's what, what's more important than even talking about wealth, is talking about um, becoming a better person and uh, understanding yourself. Being self-aware is one of the biggest, uh, greatest assets you can have. And the reason I say that is this. They... Uh, there genuinely are people and there's people in my life who I, I know them inside out and so and family members bro. so I know them very well and I've come to terms with the fact that there genuinely are people who have different personality tra types yeah. that for their, and therefore some people the opportunity cost of starting a business mm -hmm. is um, it, it is far worse uh, so the cost is far worse than, than, than the opportunity there mm -hmm. And they would prefer to go to work, clock in nine to five, they're on a decent salary, mm -hmm. and they they make do with the salary that they get. And and that doesn't mean it's a bad salary. Yes. If they get, for example, let's say they're like 40K, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're bringing home a 3,000 pound net. Yep. Then they, for them, that's and that is a good salary. Mm -hmm. And so for them, on, on 40K, 45K for the rest of their life, they know that they go in, they clock in at nine, they clock out at five, and they live within their means. And that's enough for them mm -hmm. and i think that that's also okay even though i'm on your wavelength bro, mm -hmm. i really am a proponent of like do your projects do what you love and uh, and, and and have that financial freedom and, mm -hmm. and the time freedom but i do think that there are people in the world who just are like that and and that's also a praiseworthy way to be and i agree okay, i agree fine. but where i would say that what i'm more talking about is raising the awareness okay for, i agree yeah. that's more what it's about 
Because see, when uh, generically speaking, when the youth are 20, 21 sort of, sort of thing, and we're going to say that generically speaking, I would say that achieving, let's say, for example, right, 60,000 pounds, and then having a mortgage, which we know we shouldn't have anyway, but let's say, you know, this is the norm that people think these days, having a 60,000 pound salary, then having a mortgage, and then having a family and stuff, that they will be happy and content and with everything they have, right? I'm not saying that they won't or they will, but I'm saying, have you done the maths? Mm. Because this is what this is what we should be doing. Mm-hmm. Not to say don't do it or do it, but know the maths. Mm. I know many people who have mortgages, who have a very big salary and everything like that, yet they're left with close to nothing. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Have you done the maths? And do you really know how much will be going out and coming in? And if not, then do it. See, what's amazing is that I... I is that I feel like I agree with you so much, but I've never been on the opposite end of this conversation. Sure. And as a as someone who's like sat across the table from you, I feel obliged to like um, play devil's advocate yeah. or or to like find holes in it and stuff like that. And another thing that comes to mind is that we, you and I both know, and we both agree that the issue is also contentment, mm. right? Like. We know that people that probably have had much larger salaries than 200k or 500 or they are millionaires and they, because they're not content, they always want more. Yes. So there's also an issue of being content with what you have, yes. understanding risk. But I suppose I'll count on my own point there and say that's a prerequisite. We're already assuming yes. that you have contentment. We're already assuming that you are practicing Muslim and therefore you understand risk. Yes. And so we're saying, okay, let's accept that and move on from the discussion and say, okay, now that we accept that, we should try and achieve higher, right? Yes. Yes. So, so I suppose I've counted my own argument there. I guess, and, and you're right, 100%. That as Muslims, we, we 100%, we say our razak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he provides us risk. Yeah. Okay, it comes from Allah. So I don't for a second say it does not, you know, that we know that for a fact. Yeah, you're right. And so that is already done. But it's upon us still to do what we can. And it's upon us to then work as hard as we can, achieve as much as we can. And see, the problem is, bro, is if you're in a mindset, right? And this is why it's important to raise awareness. If you think a certain salary is a lot, right? I'm sorry I keep going back to this. But if you think a certain salary is a lot, at 20 years old, that's your target. Okay? Now, realistically speaking, it takes time. Imagine wasting years and years and years and years, getting to that and then realizing... Wait, this isn't what I thought it was. And that's why it's so important. Because if you get to the age where it's like, you know, later on in your life, you may not want to do other things. You have a family, you have responsibilities, you have these sort of things. So that's why it's so important to raise the awareness in a youth age and just say, do the maths. It's as simple as that. Do the maths and then make your life decisions. And just understand everything. Understand what a mortgage costs, right? I speak about mortgages. It's wrong. We should, as, as Muslims, do it. But we know people that are in it. And so, do you really understand how much money you pay every month? Do you understand how much interest is involved? People don't know these things. Mm. And this is why it's so important to talk about these things. Because once you're in it, guess what happens? You take a mortgage at 25, you're in it for 25 years minimum. That means until 50, you have a mortgage. You practically wasted your whole life, bro. Mm. Imagine doing a minor sin, seeking forgiveness from it, asking Allah to forgive you. Allah forgives you, inshallah. How are you meant to seek forgiveness from a mortgage? You're doing that every single month. It's a trap. This is why it's so important to talk about these things. Yeah, the the thing that hit me about that that situation, bro, is um this there was like this compilation lecture series or something. Mm-hmm. And what was said is um, by the teacher was a person who gets involved with uh, impermissible transactions or um, something along the lines that I was talking about kind of like you know making money or spending money in maybe impermissible ways he said that on the day of judgment the hellfire will have rights over that person Subhanallah. imagine that Aki. imagine standing in front of Allah and the hellfire is going that's m- that's that's my person. I have rights over him or her. That's powerful. And then, yeah, you're right. Like that's the kind of stuff does it. That, that stuff makes it like not worth it. Let so, okay. So fine. So you want to raise awareness, mm-hmm. and you want to raise awareness to people to understand. Just you just want people to understand um, the truth behind wealth and how fast money can be spent and stuff like that. Yes. 
But what is the end goal? Is it what I said at the beginning, which was so that people can essentially understand where they're at so they can have financial freedom to worship Allah more? Is that the end goal? What, what's the end goal here? I agree that, yes, when you have more time and stuff, and I'll go on to this. So when you have more free time, you are definitely able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ease. There's no doubt. For example, I worked for a corporate company or corporate companies for seven years. Right. I worked in a recruitment environment. So anyone knows what recruitment is like, they will know mm. it's a sales environment, lads, you know, that's the environment, right? This is office culture, right? When you are referring to office culture, that's what it is. Now, imagine having a conversation with your manager or your director or people around you and saying, I need to pray Salah, okay? That's an awkward conversation you have, but that's the least awkward conversation, okay? Imagine now sitting with your manager and director, he has a go at you and says, you're not doing your work. You're not doing what you got to do. You need to pull your trousers up. Because as managers and directors, that's what they have to do. 15 minutes later, you have to say to him, by the way, James, uh, it's uh, Salah time. So I need to go pray Salah. Imagine that awkwardness. Imagine how difficult that is. Muslims are struggling with this. Every single day, Muslims are struggling with this. Imagine on Friday, that same director has a word with you and says, you're not doing your work. You're not doing your work. You're not doing your work. On Friday, he's okay with you. And he says... To me, he says, let's go to the pub. You know how hard it is to say no at that point? You have to say no. Our deen doesn't allow it. Yeah, but doesn't that take a person... That, 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 that's, that's the challenge that comes with our deen. And, and that just takes for the person to have to be... Uh, in that case, be the stranger and, and have to have those conversations and be comfortable with it. 100% I agree. You have to be comfortable with it. Yeah. But it, we have to recognize and understand it is difficult and it is an issue that the Muslims are facing. Yeah. Right? So many Muslims sometimes think, oh, it's okay, I'm just going to the pub. We know it's not okay. Mm. You cannot just go to the pub and sit around alcohol, basically. Right? We know that, for example, Christmas parties, you know, we can't go to them. So, of course, you have to be strong. And I'll give you a scenario. There were times when I, for example, in recruitment, you, you win business, you, you know, you go see your clients, you have client meetings and stuff like that. Right? I would go with my director in the beginning because I wasn't really experienced. So imagine now, I'm standing with my director. I go to this person's office and it's Karen. Mm. And Karen's a woman. A director gives her a handshake, gives a little cheek, cheek, kiss, kiss. And then I'm standing there and I'm like, damn, like, I, can't, I can't shake your hand. Mm. We have to talk about these things because they're real issues and how we can deal with them is very important. So... Sometimes, you know, I've, I've heard brothers say, you know, they just write in their CVs that we don't shake hands. You'll find it very hard to get interviews if you say it like that. But if you get the interview and have a conversation with a person and say, by the way, I'm so sorry, I don't really shake hands. I love your office and I would really like this job. But shaking hands isn't allowed in Islam and I, I, that's my religion. One, you have to be strong at that point. Because if you're not strong then, how are you going to be strong about Salah? Yeah. So if you shake the hand there, how are you going to say, oh, by the way, I need to pray Salah now? You will always be scared. So, this goes on. This goes yeah, on. Yeah, but I feel like we're talking about different topics here because. Uh, so you're not uh, you're not anti job. Nope. Because you're saying that like you should be able to go to a job and be confident. Yes. But you're pro starting your own business. Yes. I I I would say I'm the same. Yeah. Same. I think there's so many advantages to starting a business. Hundred percent. And my recommendation to most people would be to start a business because yes, you do get you do you are able to avoid a lot of that and you should be able to design your lifestyle in a way that suits you, right? Yes. Um. And that's kind of like a very like um, Tim Ferriss four hour work week esque kind of mentality. Design your own lifestyle. With that being said, um, at the same time, you do have to be able to not you do have to be able to kind of tackle a lot of these issues head on mm -hmm. and not run away from them. In the sense that if you are the type of person that it's going to do a lot more damage to you to yes. run your own business yeah. than it is to just work at a job, mm -hmm. then perhaps for you, what's important for you is to learn how to tackle these things head on. Yes. But for those who can start a business, mm -hmm. why not start a business? I think we agree, bro. And, and you know, I, I would say we agree. And, and now to tackle the point of if someone is, for example, working a job, right? And they don't want to take the risk of a business. I completely understand. Not everyone wants to take a risk, you know, take the risk of a business. One, there aren't many people to help the Muslims in terms of even like businesses and stuff, stuff like that. We, I didn't really know where I was meant to go for business help. So one, we need that. But second of all, if someone is working a job, right? What are they doing in the evenings? What are they doing on the weekends? Is it possible that you could have something on the side to build a stream, a second stream, is there? Is it possible you could do something like that? Do you have time free in the evenings or on the weekends if you're not content and happy with work, right? I genuinely believe, right? And this is going to sound a bit controversial, but I genuinely believe going to work is a massive issue for the Muslims at times. 
Bro, when I was going to work, I would go seven o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the evening, I would come back. I would just about get my salah in. And when I would come home, bro, my mom would speak to me sometimes. She would say, what do you want to eat? And I'd be like, oh, just roti or something, you know? Because I was so tired from work. I wasn't even able to have a proper conversation with my own mother. And I know this is the case. I speak to so many people who are working these jobs and they are tired coming home. You know, from, they go on the trains, it drains you. Come home, you don't want to speak to your family. Imagine being in a situation where you don't want to speak to your family. Yeah, and also like if you work for yourself, the freedom of time means that in that 12 hour day, mm. you seven to seven, you leave in the house at seven, you're spending eight hours at work. And by the time you've done your commute, you're, um, you're home at seven, so it's really 12 hours gone out of your day. You haven't, uh, uh, other than like literally doing your salah, maybe even just your fard salah, you haven't really done anything to build that connection with Allah. Yeah. And if you're doing that five days a week for 40 years, all of a sudden, you haven't really had much time in between. Whereas when you work for yourself, you control those eight hours. Mm -hmm. You Maybe you can't control those um, commute times, but you could definitely control those eight hours yes. and what you do in those eight hours. Yeah. And so maybe you can come to work and when you get to your office, you say, you know, for the first half an hour of my day, I'm going to do Quran memorization. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do any other work. Then I start my work. And so what you do is you move your work down from like an eight hour day to like a, six hour day yes. with so you're still at the office for eight hours but two of those hours you're focusing on your religion mm -hmm. and i think that's what tim ferris talks about not about religion but he in the four hour work week as the title suggests it's all about basically working from wherever whenever and designing your life around your work rather than sorry designing your work around your life mm -hmm. rather than designing your life around your work yes and i do so overall yeah uh, as muslims if we do want to succeed and succeeding means succeeding in the next life really we need to put in more work into our studies and into our deeds and one of the probably most beneficial ways of doing that is to control those eight hours yes. and because those eight hours times five is 40 100. those 40 hours times a month is yeah. 160 yeah that's what you said 16 yes yeah. <laughs> and then times that by 60 years of life exactly. you realize that just those two hours or one hour that you can do when when you work a nine to five you just start at 10 you do 10 to 5 so between 9 and 10 you're at the office doing quran mm -hmm. that's one hour times five five hours five hours times four is 20 that's 20 hours extra a month that mm -hmm. you're doing quran mm -hmm. and we know that with the quran you get benefits like your risk increases with quran anyway 100%. it's a miracle you get uh, a shifa mm -hmm. your affairs are made easier for you so many things just from reading Quran that the pros of reading Quran versus the pros of working that extra hour, the the Quran outweighs it every time. So, yeah, um, I, I I agree, man. And so, do you give practical steps then in that case? I do give practical steps, and I am planning, obviously, because I've only been on YouTube for two months now. But I am planning on making more and more practical steps. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think what I'm doing basically right now is coming up with we're coming up with uh, telling people the problems. First, you have to tell people the problem, right? And then you give the solution. So I am planning on talking about the problems and what genuinely are the problems in today's society that we face. And then talk about the solutions, inshallah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this. You're putting a big responsibility on your shoulders, I'll tell you that much. May Allah accept it. May Allah yeah, accept I mean, it. I mean, May Allah accept it. and Because it's such a... Bro, we just tried... We just tear a bit of it apart. Mm. And it's like, you have to deal with... Okay, you sh like in one video, you're probably saying start start a business, and then you're gonna have you know the people who are saying, well, what's wrong with getting a job? And you're like, well, there's nothing wrong with getting a job, but you could start a business. And then then there's an the element of okay, but um, just all of the things that we spoke about, we tried to tear a bit of it apart, yeah. and there's so much more of that. So you're putting a big responsibility on your on your on your on yourself, and I commend you because it's needed. Mm. Um, but know that there's probably gonna be a lot of like ah, but you said this and what about this? It's like, well, I'm not saying not that. 100%. But, yeah. And I've already had it. Of course, people will always disagree and always have their own opinion and always, always, listen, opinions are valid. We accept them and we take them, right? But if I can help a few individuals, I'll put it like this, Faisal. If 10 Muslims become multimillionaires, 10, just 10, you know how much that could change the Muslims mm. in itself? Mm. You can have academies, you can have places, you can fund, you know, we know places we can fund and help and so much more. Ten Muslims become become millionaires and are on the deen. And that is the main thing for them. Deen is the main thing. They don't care about their money, but they make money to only give back to the Muslims. If we had ten of those, subhanAllah, that would it would really impact us. It would really change us. Mm. Agreed, bro. <laughs> I tell you this, you know. The main reason why I left my job, and this is 
This is uh, an interesting story as such. The main reason I left my job and started my own business because one day my dad had to go to hospital. Okay? And it, was, it wasn't anything serious. At the time, it was nothing serious. Alhamdulillah, it was not later either. But I spoke to my director and I said, my man, I need to go to the hospital. My dad, you know, he's not feeling well. He was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Totally understand. I started thinking about it and I messaged him and I said, look, I want to spend a couple of days with my dad because we didn't really know what the situation was. Alhamdulillah, he was okay. But there was a chance he could have been really unwell. Okay. At that time, I messaged my director and I said, look, I might not be able to come to the office for a few days. He didn't take it as well as he could have. At that point, I realized something. If something happens to my parents, right? And bro, I really, I want people to reflect on this. If something happens to our parents and we cannot look after them in their need, in their time of need, then what are we doing with our lives? Like if, the, if working our job, really truly, let's, let's think about this. If my, if my parents now get afflicted with an issue, a disease, where I need to look after my parents, it would be an honor for me to look after my mom or my dad. And I would want to, to my best ability. But could I do that now? If I was working a job, I would have to leave my job. And these are real issues because our parents one day will go. There's no doubt. Allah says we all will go one day. So do we want to be in a situation where either, and so I'm not saying now don't have a job, but I'm saying make sure you have enough savings for when you want to look after your parents. Because you will want to spend time with your parents when they are not well. Because if you spend your time at the job, you, you'll think... Last few months of my parents were around and I couldn't spend time with them. You curse yourself for the rest of your life, as you should. So, yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I left my job because I realized I was I wanted to be there for my parents whenever they needed me. My mom calls me now; I'm there. Ten minutes later, no problem. What do you need? You probably just need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> was it difficult starting your own business? I made it the. And I'm sorry I'm answering your questions in an ajeeb way, but I made a da'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I said, Ya Rab, make this way, uh, make the business a way of means for me to get closer to you. And Wallahi, I promise you this, bro, is I felt like that da'a did bits for me. Mm. When you have yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, what does Allah say? Give up something for my sake and I'll make it, you know, I'll give you something better. Allah says that. The creator promises us that. I made that da'a. And it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Of course, I had issues. Today, we're going through issues because of the whole situation. But I'll be honest, man, like the da'as help a lot. I make jama in the mosque now because I can, before I couldn't. It's a lot easier now, alhamdulillah. So if you put your deen before, it's a lot easier than you think. Why do you think people don't want to take risks? Because society tells them not to. Society is set up a certain way where if... Society is set up where you go to school, you go to college, you go to university and you get a job. You get a house, you pay off your mortgage, you live for the weekends and that society summed up in a nutshell. Because that benefits the system. Because that benefits the system. In a nutshell, that is what it is. So yeah, that's, that's society. I mean, nah, I don't know, I'm not even going to say it, but I was going to say, you know, when we're in school, sure. like we get taught what we should be doing. So I'll tell you this. We get taught what to do in life by our teachers. Do this and do this and do this. And we get educated on how to become successful, how to become wealthy, how to you know, live your life from our teachers, right? And they teach us education, which is so very valuable. But I'll ask you a question. <coughs> Are teachers successful? In a sense where, in a sense, and I know, I know where this was going, I know where this was going. I mean in the sense where, do they really love their jobs as such? I have family members in my family who are teachers. Well, they want to run from, you know, teaching in the UK, basically. They, they really don't like their jobs. My, my sister-in-law, she's a teacher. You know, they've gone to abroad because, they hate, you know, there's so much homework, so much effort, etc., etc. Et they've gone abroad, you know. My point being, though, is, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, from my experience, I found that teachers love being teachers because of, but not because of, maybe you're right in regards to that, the work they have to take home and stuff. And then, but in terms of like, the people I know who are teachers get real fulfillment out of like seeing the children succeed. I agree. Yeah. I but, agree with that part. Yeah, that part I think. Uh, and 
And I think we're naive if we think that people, everybody thinks that money is um, what makes people successful. I think as we get older, we all as a society do have a um, joint opinion that success is contentment and enjoying yes. your life. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes we get caught up on like assuming that people think that um, success is financial and we need to help people understand that success comes from contentment. But I think people generally have that, get that idea. But it's about implementing it because we feel weak at times. And when we feel weak, we feel weak to our desires. And our desires are a lot of the times the dunya. Mm -hmm. And that's for all of us, bro. Like, you know how many times, like, sometimes like um, I've caught myself Let's say, for example, I'm waiting, right, around for something. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, um, and it's like a five minute wait. So I can't really do much in that five minutes. Technically, I could be reading Quran on my phone or something. But sometimes I catch myself, like, on the phone, like, viewing, like, my dream house, like, dream <laughs> houses. And I'm like, oh, man. Like, I do that as well. Man. You know what I mean? It's, well. like, it's on rent, though, yeah. my one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. sure yours is as well, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but I'm saying, like, the dream house. Well, yeah, even, yeah. even, like, uh, uh, the dream house to buy. Like, you okay. should look at it, you think, oh, man, yeah, yeah. if I had 2.5 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, so the point is, is that I think all of us um, sometimes feel weak. Mm -hmm. And when we feel weak, I think we feel weak to our desires. Mm -hmm. And our desires tend to be stuff in the dunya. And the dunya can be gotten through finances. So I think we all accept that. But we all also, when we got our head screwed on, accept that happiness doesn't necessarily come from, from that. So, um, yeah, man. It's an interesting discussion. It's an interesting discussion. Uh, what, what kind of content is it that you're, you're planning to do moving forward? So you said that you right now you're focusing on the problem, but there's so much that you can do with this with this kind of content. What, where, where is it that you want to take it? So look, right now I do want to speak about the problems and stuff like that. Inshallah, I do plan on making more and more content which can help the Muslims and help the people in terms of uh, alternatives. Now, what do I, what do I mean by that? So ideas on businesses, how you can implement a business, how to do you know, calling a client, for example, right? Many times we don't even understand, but how important sales is. Fine. Right? These sort of things. Um, and obviously just the simple fact that, like, you know, uh, what, does, what, what does Warren Buffett say, for example, about houses? Warren Buffett, he says, I wouldn't buy a house because it's as if you have taken the tools away from a carpenter. What does he mean by this? Like if you had 20,000 pounds, you put it in a mortgage and you just put that away now. You, that's your tools. That that what you could have done with it. So, alternatives in terms of don't have a mortgage you can rent, and alternatives in the sense where you can buy properties outright in places which are cheaper to pay the rent. Mm. So there are alternatives. There are solutions. Inshallah, Taala, I, I want to speak more and more about the solutions as well. What's your um, YouTube channel? I'm trying to find it now, but it's not your name. Um, it's Abu Musa. A B U M U S A. Oh, I found you. You're the first one. you first one up. That's good to know. Let's um. I can actually share my screen on this. You know that. If we want to get if we want to get real advanced with this podcast, getting all technical now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to hide my uh bookmark tab. There you go. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's long. Sorry. Yeah, because you, you what camera do you use? You got a really good quality camera. Have I? I um camera. it's the I mean uh it's the M fifty with a sixteen Sigma lens. What's the M fifty? Canon M fifty. Okay. The Sigma lens is I'm amazing. not technical at all by the way. Are you bit. sure it's Canon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know Canon worked with Sigma lenses. But you can get converters and stuff, can't you? Yeah, I'm not using a converter. Oh, okay. It just goes it's direct. Straight on. Yeah, yeah, straight on. Sigma lenses are beautiful. That's what we use. We're using Sigma lenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sigma lens, it was good. To be fair, I probably watched about 10, 10 hours of videos oh, really? trying to find out like which camera. I, I, I've i never really used cameras and stuff. So. Oh, so would you consider yourself a perfectionist? No. I, I, I would never watch 10 hours of content on cameras. Well, I didn't obviously go straight, but there were like times where I was watching videos like, uh, but I had no clue where to even start. I didn't even know what camera was a good camera or what cameras was a bad camera. So I had no clue where to even start. Love your content, bro. I appreciate that. Along better, even just with the titles and stuff, man. I appreciate that, man. And I guess that's what it's about. I think it's just about raising the awareness and making the Muslims feel like, you know what, there is someone who they can, for example, approach if they're finding it hard to get a job, right? Like I run a recruitment company. Yeah. Okay. 
you can definitely send me a DM or send me a message or send me an email and ask me to look over your CV. Okay. I will do it. No problem. Sorry, I just realized the whole time the camera was on me. <laughs> That's all right. No problem. Imagine if it was a whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so as I was saying, like if, if people wanted that, like I, I want to be there for people to basically come up to me. Like so many brothers have, have said, look, we've started a marketing agency. How do we approach clients? Okay. How do we speak to clients? How do we win that business? I'm there. I, I don't want anything in return. I'll help you basically. So there are even the people that want to set up a business, but don't know how to go about it, how to win business, how to start a company as such or anything. So inshallah, at least they have someone who they can message and speak to and say, okay, you know, he's there sort of thing. I'm there if you need me. Appreciate it. You're that helping hand. <laughs> I'm that helping hand. hand. And like I said, if I help the people, Allah will help me. So what's, what's your goals in terms of like non-content creating side of things? Are you just focusing on building the business, kind of building a business, building a family and... Yeah, 100%. Of course, fam fa family comes, I would say, first. But right now, I would say for uh, the next few years, uh, I'm trying to build a situation where, inshallah, I don't need to, in essence, work. And may Allah give me the tawfiq to study the deen of Islam I mean, as well. I, mean. I think that's key. And the reason why I do what I do is, so inshallah, my business is self-running. Inshallah, you know, I don't need to work as such. Inshallah, I can help people as much as I can and study the deen. I, that is what I want to do. Inshallah, may Allah make it easy in two, three years. Do you read many books like um, non-fiction um, books? I'm like self-help, business, that kind of stuff. I, I'm not much of a reader, I have to be oh, honest. Really? I'm more of a, a, a practical guy. And I, what about audio books? Like listening to them? Have you, know, you, have, you have you given it a try? I, so, yes, okay. to a certain extent. So, I, 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 I don't know if you know Grant Cardone. Yes. I thought you would. So, I've heard a few of his stuff. I've heard a few of Gary Vee's stuff. And I, I listen. You need to dig deeper, man. Huh? You need to dig deeper. I need to dig deeper. That's yeah. like surface level. <laughs> I know, and I know. And honestly, like, I will listen to these guys. And, you know, just a little bit of motivation. Like, when I'm at the man. gym, for example, you know, and I will listen to them because it's nice. And I guess... Yeah, so I'll listen to them for some motivation or some maybe insights or something like that. I need to recommend you some books. Yeah? Yeah, I'll man. be on that, I'll be on that. I mean, I'm not much of a reader, I have to be honest, but audiobook, I'll... I'll audiobooks? Yeah, 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 I'll listen, I'll listen. And if you use a Freshly Grounded audiobook link, yeah. you get a free audiobook. Okay, inshallah. Yeah. I would definitely. Yeah, bro, you have to, man. I, 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 reading books or even listening to books has really opened my eyes up, man, to loads of things. Right now, I'm listening to um, a couple of books by a guy called Dale Carnegie. Yeah. And it's like a lot more raw and authentic because he wrote his books in like 1936 1942 and they still relate now as they did then mm -hmm. and it's amazing to see that back then the mentality that because bro like the books that exist now as powerful as they are because i i, I love them a lot of them talk about the tools uh, that we have access to now and the society that we have now and with dale carnegie he wrote his book so long ago yet they still relate to now yeah. which shows that it's all about mindset because the tool that you had in 1936 mm -hmm. that you still have now is your mind. 100%. And all of his books are about like developing this mindset um, for success, basically, in different ways. And um, I remember uh, the chapter that I was reading yesterday in, in this book, um, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. The chapter was talking about something really powerful. It was, uh, it was about... Okay, it was about not... Not letting people. Okay, it was about like trying to trying to save face, right? For the reason of people's perceptions of you and people actually not caring. And I'll, I'll try. That was a really bad way of explaining. It, but he was giving stories about like a woman, for example, who um, she ended up getting a divorce with her husband, and the husband said that she did x y and z like she was this type of person and she spent base and her husband was like semi-famous or something i'm, I'm really not remembering everything clearly sure, sure. but it's the message that's important she spent like her whole life then trying to prove that he was like he was a rubbish person right and nobody cared yeah. because when you spend 30 years and that's your only mission. Mm -hmm. Bro, people forget. Yeah. And and that was might have been the talk of the town for 15 minutes. But people get on with their own lives, man. 100%. But she spent 30 years. So she's wasted brain space mm -hmm. for 30 years because he said one thing. And so the point was there was kind of stop 
I, I, sometimes we have to realize that what we're doing is we're, we're, we're like almost like beating a dead horse and like trying to explain ourselves or trying to do things for the sake of trying to save our face and our perception mm -hmm. in front of people. But, and, but people are so concerned with themselves, bro, that they don't even care. What well, you think people care about you, oftentimes they don't. Bro, you know, it's, it's crazy that you said that. I'll tell you a little story. When I was about 22 years old, I was working in recruitment, obviously. And alhamdulillah, like I did okay. They gave me a little promotion and they gave me a car allowance, for example. Right? Now, at the time, I felt like I wanted to buy my own car and have a really nice car, etc., etc. Right? And there is no doubt, and I'm speaking about myself, and people may relate or may not. But at the time, I wanted people to be like, wow, like he's doing okay. He's got, you know, I bought a brand new Mercedes, which was affecting my account. Really and truly, I wasn't making as much as I shouldn't have bought that car, in essence. I realized something. But I was 22, it was a really nice car, it was brand new, etc., etc. People don't really care. People didn't really genuinely care. In fact, what do most of the time, what, most of the time what happens, you see a nice car and you want to really, you don't want to look at it too long because you think the guy in the car might be thinking, oh, like, you know, so in your head you're thinking, oh, just have a quick look, look away sort of thing, right? When we start worrying about what other people think, right, then that affects our, uh, us so much in our choices, in our decisions, in our life. And sometimes it's not even good for us. Like what we buy, what, how we dress, how we look, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People generally don't care about it many times. Yeah, I think there's an element. Like, okay, let's talk about it from an Islamic perspective. There's an element Islamically that we have to um, present ourselves well, right? Yes. Like right now, I've got this. This I'm seeing on the camera. I've got this of my beard coming <laughs> out, and it just needs a bit of a comb. Right. But Islamically, I should comb that, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, Islamically yeah. speaking, bro, I should present myself neat, yeah. clean clothes, look nice. But as long as that, if if I if if you walk past me on the street now. Musab, yeah, and you look how you look. Along Berk, you look clean. You're wearing fresh clothes. Ah, you, you you smell good. You're gonna walk past me, and I'm probably not gonna think twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, but if I do think twice, I'll be like, oh, okay, like that's a normal guy, and he presents himself well. Job yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't present yourself well, um, you it'll be like, oh man, like he's a bit smelly, or he doesn't. He looks a bit rough. But even then, right, both times. Is a thought, and then if I do think, if I'm not so con like uh, like consumed with what's happening in my life, it's, it's still just like a twenty second thought, and it's better that we have a twenty second thought that ah oh, that guy holds himself well because you're representing Islam. Yes. Even, but I'm saying at both times it's just a ten second thought, and then I get on with my life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we spend so long getting ready in the morning, so long like spending an extra ten k on a car, blah blah, because we care about those ten seconds, bro. Yes. But what we don't realize is that it's, is that it's we, what we don't realize is that. Eight times out of ten, those ten seconds don't even happen because yep. the other people are just so consumed with their own lives. Yep. And those two times, that twenty percent of the time, even when it does happen, it lasts ten seconds, bro. Yeah. So, as long as you present yourself well, as long as you look after yourself, as long as you, you know, uh, have your isa, mm -hmm. don't overdo it to the point where you're so concerned about what people think that you've wasted your whole life on what people think, yeah. and you haven't done any benefit to yourself. Yeah. And and and. And that's what like gets me because well I used to be that I mm. used to be like just wanting to make sure that I like that I'm I, I used to be so concerned about what people thought about me yeah and maybe and I, unfortunately I do think as Muslims sometimes when we start practicing mm -hmm. that we go too much down the other end mm -hmm. sometimes bro which yes. like we only care about Allah who gets scruffy this I, I do think that we are guilty of that I agree but. As long as we present ourselves well, bro, we do have to just think, you know what, bro? Let me just think about my relationship with Allah, my life, how am I affecting people around me? Mm -hmm. And I, it's how many of the you talk about people who are so nice to their friends, but it's so horrible to the people in their own household. Yeah. And it's, it's the same way. It's like when you, are, you look so nice for others, you spend so much time looking good for others, mm -hmm. but do you look good and, and present house. yourself well at the house? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I, I actually really do agree with that. But see, again, like... There's, a, there's even with that there's a balance for example like look if I'm spending like 500 pound on an outfit now do I have a reason for it and like you just said that 10 seconds where I'm worrying about someone else's what they think of me can genuinely impact me for the rest of the month it can if I spend something like you know I, I, I make for example a certain amount and I spend maybe 20% on it on an outfit because I really really want this outfit again that whole month is because of that one comment that someone might make may or may not make so it is, it, that's why it's so important to just get your mind right as well. And I agree 100% that as Muslims, of course, we have to look after ourselves as well. 
Uh, sometimes we don't at times, but in fact, you know, it's it's needed. Yeah, man. I, I, I think we become so passionate about the Dean when you go through that transition mm. of awakening that sometimes we become like just so consumed with okay, well then. I don't actually care about anything anymore yeah. because yeah, when yeah. you when you fall in love with the deen, alhamdulillah, bro. When you fall in love with the deen, naturally you fall a bit out of love with the dunya, mm -hmm. and that's so beautiful mm -hmm. and it's so amazing. But sometimes we're so passionate about it at that time that it's like we also forget that, like, first of all, how we represent ourselves impacts people around us. That we want to we want to change the people around us, our families and friends. And if they look at us on the outside, because they can't see our heart. And for us, it's like, oh, our heart's been cleaned, right? Mm -hmm. But they can't see our heart. So when they see us, they only see on the outside, and like, oh, all of a sudden he's changed. And he's always looking rough now. He's always like, like not caring about things. And, and he has this mentality that like, oh, whatever, I don't care. And we do do that role sometimes. Yeah. And I think that it's like when, when someone first starts practicing, they're really rough and tough with their family and friends. Yep. And then over time, they realize that they need to be softer in order to, mm -hmm. in order to impact them. And it's likewise, we, become, we sometimes become so out of love with the dunya straight away that we almost don't care about it at all. Mm -hmm. And we need to just care about it enough to have it in our hands at least. 100%. And, and when I remember, again, you, make, you talk about the transition. Uh, you know, when you're in the transition of basically you start practicing and stuff, you become a bit harsh and you're like, no, I don't care about anything. You know, that's it sort of thing. And then, of course, with time, you realize that we have to pray Salah every day. We have to do Ibadat every day. And we have to, it's very difficult to keep that basically going for like your whole life because otherwise people will just not speak to you, leave yeah. you. And it's very, it's very tough to even have a conversation with you. Sahih. As Muslims, we have to be approachable. You know, someone should feel comfortable coming up to me, speaking to me about an issue maybe he or she is having, you know. And so these things are very, very needed. And yes, of course, 100%, we make it sometimes an issue. We make it ourselves an issue where... We have to understand if we are starting to practice, the other person should see that the deen is making him into a better person, uh, uh, more of a family person, more you know, caring to his parents, his family, uh, better to his friends. Uh, if it's not impacting you in a positive way, unknowingly, maybe the person who is looking at you, for example, you come across rough, unapproachable, you don't want to talk to anyone, maybe it's going to affect you in a negative way where the person's like, oh, I don't... Is this Islam basically? This is what Islam teaches us. So 100% that it can generally impact people in a negative way. Mm. Musab, listen, uh, uh, phew, thank you so much uh, for jumping on Fresh Garden, man. I, I really appreciate it. And um, I love having these kind of conversations. Man. I love delving into the minds of people and I feel so blessed that I get to do that. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I think it's a real eye-opener. Eye I really think that people are going to listen to this episode and some might even decide to leave their jobs, bro. So <laughs> either congratulations on getting someone to achieve their dreams or congratulations on uh, ruining someone's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but bro, thank you so much. And it's very inspiring talking to you. Um, I, I can see now why so many people wanted to have you on Freshly Grounded. Um, and, and I think that we, we, we all need to have a similar mindset to, to you with regards to growing and uh, making sure that we do things with Ihsan. So uh, congratulations on that. Jazakallah khair for joining me, man. Barakallah. Really appreciate Allah it. Allah thank Allah you, man. Allah Allah accept it. And for those listening, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Fresh to Grounded and we'll see you again next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.